Hello and welcome to another video. Um, this one's uh, rather late really because it should have been tacked on to the uh, end of the uh, group of videos that I did about uh, effects. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today are the uh, casts uh, and the healing and uh, damage effects um, which uh, I, I didn't really cover in, in that series. So uh, here we go. Um, so we've got Bob the, the fighter here and during his uh, adventures uh, Bob has managed to pick up some uh, magic items. He's got himself uh, a potion of healing here. He's also got some uh, serpent uh, venom uh, which he could maybe use to uh, coat his uh, weapon with and he's got a wand of uh, magic missiles as well and we're going to ignore the fact that maybe he can't actually use a wand of magic missiles but there you go so we're going to come to our uh, actions tab and what we want to do is we want to set up a bunch of effects which will automate a lot of this uh, for us um, so we're going to come to this uh, little button here the add power and we're going to click that to add a power group and then in here, uh, we're going to, let's call it uh, consumables. Um, and we're going to tab out of that. And what that does is create a heading for us in this, uh, for this power group. It names this power group. So let's do the potion of healing first. So in the left-hand box here, uh, we're going to type in a name. Uh, and then we can click the dragon icon or the link icon here. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to unlock this and then I'm going to copy this bit of text here from the description. Just uh, uh, control and C and then control and V and add this uh, into here. And this gives us a, a description uh, of the uh, item so that when we uh, click this, we've got some idea of what this uh, portion of healing does. So leaving that open for the moment, we want to set up uh, an effect for this. Uh, obviously, we're going to want to be able to heal uh, for 2d4 plus 2 points of damage. So we're going to right click over this line. We're going to go to our add action. And instead of going to add effects, which uh, all the other videos showed, we're going to go to uh, add heal. Uh, we get this uh, line, uh, which is, of course, blank. So we're going to click on the magnifying glass here to open up the uh, dialog for the healing. Um, so you can see we've got the name and then we've got the type and targeting and then we've got the actual uh, heal itself down in this line here. The targeting as uh, ever is either targets or self and this one we're going to set it to self because if he drinks this potion Bob's going to get the healing. And we've got the type which is either hit points or temporary hit points. In this case it's real hit points so we're going to leave it at hit points. And then we want the actual amount that is going to be healed. So it's 2d4 plus 2. So we're going to pick up, uh, whoops, we're not going to roll it. Um, we're going to pick up the uh, d4 and then we're going to right click to add a second d4 and just drop that into this uh, section here. And uh, we now have 2d4. We've got a uh, plus 2. So in the bonus box, we're just going to add a 2. And uh, if you can see here, the effect has now. Uh, sample down to 2d4 plus 2 uh, and that's it uh, we can close that um, so if uh, Bob uh, here is on the combat tracker uh, let's say uh, say that Bob's got himself a bit wounded and he wants to uh, drink his potion of healing all he needs to do here is uh, click on the uh, heal icon here and you can see that it tells us in chat that uh, the dice have rolled and Bob's healed some uh, damage. He's now only got four points instead of 11. If Bob wanted to um, throw this potion down someone else's throat rather than his own, um, then he could just uh, simply uh, cl uh, click and hold uh, on the heal button here and then uh, drop it on the target that he wants to heal. Um, Jane isn't wounded, so it didn't have any effect, but that's how you would heal um, or use a potion of healing uh, on uh, a, uh, an ally. So that's the potion of healing. Uh, so the next one we want to look at is the uh, serpent venom. Um, so this is going to uh, require the uh, target to make a saving throw, a constitution saving throw, and then uh, if it uh, fails, it's going to take 3d6 poison damage. If it succeeds, it's going to take uh, half the damage. 
Um, so what we are doing here now is we're going to add an item to the consumables and this will give us a new line with uh, within this power group, within the consumables power group. And we can come in here and we can type in the name for this so that we know uh, what we're talking about. Um, and again, um, we can uh, click this uh, link here. We can uh, unlock this. Uh, we can select all the text here. Uh, we can copy uh, and paste in here so that we know uh, what we are talking about. We can click on this and we can get a description of what it is we have. Again, we're going to uh, right click over this line. We're going to go to add action. And this time we're going to go to add cast. Uh, and we see again, we have a new line with the ubiquitous magnifying glass at the end of it, which we're going to click. So this is the spellability use dialog. So you've got an attack at the top, which would obviously be used if this were an attack, which it isn't. Um, and then we've got a save in the middle, and then we've got an on save box as well. And we've also got this little box here uh, for uh, magic. And so if this were a magic effect, then we would tick that box and that would indicate to Fantasy Grounds that it is magic for the purposes of maybe overcoming resistances or, or whatnot. So in this case, uh, we've got a save. Um, we need to make it a constitution saving throw. So we're going to just click in the type box uh, until we uh, get to con. Uh, now, we're told here that this is a, a fixed saving throw. It's a DC 11 saving throw, so it's not based on uh, Bob's abilities in any way. It's a straightforward saving throw. Um, if it were, uh, the, the, the default for here, as you can see, is the group DC or group attack. And if we go to this magnifying glass here on the header of the consumables, this is the power group um, base attacks and base save DC. And you can see here that it's set to base. Uh, and this basically means that it's set to whatever this ability is in here. So if we set this ability to strength, then it, all of the uh, things in the power group, the DCs and the attack bonuses are going to be worked out based on Bob's strength. If we change it to wisdom, it's all going to be based on Bob's uh, wisdom. But in this case, we don't want that. So we're not going to touch this box at all. We're going to leave all this as it is. Um, and we're going to uh, tell Fantasy Grounds that this is a fixed saving throw. So we're going to click on base here. We see we've got another possibility, eight plus ability. We can put a different stat in here. So if in this power group, for example, if we had set the power group here to strength, um, but this particular uh, saving throw wasn't based on Bob's strength ability, maybe it was based on a different ability score, then we would add, we would click this until we got this ability score uh, that it actually uh, affects. But again, we are not wanting this, so we're going to keep clicking until we get to fixed. And then in the bonus box, we're going to type in 11, which is the DC that we are told is required. And you can see here, it is, this has changed now to con DC 11. Now, we also know that uh, the target is only going to take half as much damage on a successful save. So if we come down to here uh, on save, the, at the moment, the damage is uh, nothing. So if we click on this, it'll say half on success. This little box here has changed to con DC 11 and then there's an H in brackets, which indicates that this is a half on success save. Um, so that's it. We have uh, completed that part of the uh, process. We can then move on to the damage and we are told here that he takes a uh, 3d6 or the target takes 3d6 poison damage. So we're going to right click again on the same line and we're going to go to add action and this time we're going to add damage. We're going to click on the uh, magnifying glass to open this up. Damage box is very simple. All we need to do is add damage. We know that it's 3d6. So we're going to pick up uh, a d6, right, uh, left click and hold. And then we're going to right click twice to add a couple more dice. And then we're just going to drop that in there. We need to tell Fantasy Grounds the type of damage uh, is poison. So we just type in poison in there. Uh, if there was more damage uh, lines, then you can uh, add in uh, another damage line here. You can keep adding in lots of damage lines. Uh, if you uh, make a mistake, then we can delete that damage line in the usual way. Uh, so that's us. We've got everything that we need now for this particular uh, item.
So if we go to our combat tracker uh, and Bob uh, targets bandit number one, uh, clicks the cast button, the bandit automatically makes a saving throw and then we can just simply click on the uh, damage and the correct damage will be applied. So the uh, uh, the bandit actually succeeded in their save. Uh, Bob rolled uh, eight for the damage, and you can see here that four points of damage was done to the uh, bandit because um, he made his, he was succeeding in his saving throw, so he takes half damage. So Fantasy Crowns handled all that automatically for us. Uh, now, at the moment, um, both of these things are completely unlimited. Um, Bob can uh, cast, he can uh, do as many potions of healing as he wants, he can he can use the Serpent Venom as many times as he wants, but uh, that isn't real because he may only have a, a specific amount of these uh, potions or uh, he may only have uh, a certain amount of doses of the Serpent Venom. So we want to limit how many times that Bob can use this. And this is where we then come into the mode down at the bottom here of the actions tab. It's set to standard at the moment, but if we click that once, then we'll come to preparation mode. And this is where we can set limits on all of these things. And you can see that uh, against each uh, line of uh, each item that's in this uh, dialogue or in this uh, power group, we've got uh, a box, which is uses per day. And then we've got another box here, which we can cycle through uh, either daily, uh, rest once uh, or daily again. Now daily is basically a once per long rest. Uh, rest is a short rest and once means that you only have uh, a limited number. Whatever, whenever you've used up this number, then you no longer have uh, that uh, one number available. So uh, let's, supposing that Bob only has the one portion of healing, so we just type the one into this uh, line here, and we set this to once. And maybe he's got uh, three or four uh, doses of the Serpent of Venom, so uh, let's give him four doses. Uh, and we're also going to set this to uh, once, because once he's used the last dose, then he no longer will have this available. If we click back through to the combat screen now, we can see that there are these little checkboxes have appeared against each of these uh, lines in this combat group. Um, so he's got one against the Potion of Healing because we set it to once, and we have got four against the Serpent Venom because we set it to four times. So when Bob uses one of his uh, uses of his Serpent Venom, he can just uh, tick off one use uh, of that. Uh, and if again, sim uh, and similarly, if he uses his potion of healing, he can tick that off. Now, when we tick this one off, because that was the last use, he only had one, it disappears from the uh, actions tab. It's still there. If we go back to the standard uh, mode, you can see that the potion of healing is still there, but it has been used. Now we go back to the uh, actions tab again, and we can see that Bob doesn't uh, have it anymore. Uh, and similarly, uh, if we ticked off all of these, then that two would disappear. Now, because we set these things to once, uh, if Bob was to uh, take a long rest, then these things are not going to come back. If we go back into preparation mode and we set this to daily, for example, and then we took a, a long rest, then you can see that these items would come back because that's how uh, the long rest works. Basically, a long rest will look through the items, uh, see whether or not something should uh, regenerate on a long rest, and if so, it, it basically clears all the, the, the check marks. So that's why we set that to once because once he's used it, it's, it's gone. So let's look at the Wand of Magic Missiles. Um, so in this one, uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently. All we're going to do here is we're going to uh, come to the Wand of Magic Missiles description. We're going to uh, click on the spell to open up the uh, spell. And then we're just going to simply drag the spell and drop it on the uh, power group title here, the uh, consumables title. Uh, this gives us magic missile, but this is a wand of magic missile. So we're going to just edit this line so that it uh, tells us exactly what it is. And then we're going to tab out of that. Uh, and uh, that's it. We've got we've we're done. Um, except of course that the wand has a limited number of uses. So again, we're just going to go into preparation mode. Uh, 
going to find our wand. We were told it has seven charges. We're going to change this once again to uh, once. And then when we come out of uh, preparation mode and go into combat mode, we can see that we now have our seven charges. So uh, if Bob is using charges, then he's just ticking them off as usual. Uh, and uh, if he uses the last one, it will go away as usual. Um, this one's slightly different in that um, if we uh, use the last thing, then we're supposed to roll a, a, a d20. And if it turns up a one, then the one disappears. So if we uh, did that, uh, I hope we don't get a one and we didn't. Uh, so Bob uh, can now roll his d6 to see how many charges he gets back. So he gets six charges back. If we come back into standard or preparation mode here, we can uh, then click uh, off the six charges that he, he gets back. Uh, and so he can then start his day with uh, six charges on his uh, Wand of Magic missiles. And again, uh, if we take uh, any kind of rest here, a short rest or a long rest, then this doesn't affect any of this because um, these have been set to uh, once. Um, so I think that's it for those uh, kinds of things. There's uh, loads of other magic items that could go in here uh, that are consumables or that are, are this kind of thing. And you can set these up. And this is how you would set preparation mode uh, for a variety of different things. And of course, this isn't just for uh, magic items or anything like that. It can also be for character traits, etc. as well. These can all go in here and you can use preparation mode to uh, limit the quantity of uh, uh, uses uh, that you can make and you can uh, tell fantasy grounds when these uses get restored uh, either on short rests long rests or uh, not at all so that's it thanks for watching uh, cheers for now